Hey everybody, my name is Troy Woods, uh, producer of The Missing Anchor, and I just wanted to personally uh, take the time to thank each and every one of you for your support um, as we released our feature uh, documentary this past summer, uh, June 2014. We actually released it on Father's Day. Uh, the support and feedback that you guys gave was great, and I'm really excited because we have some other things in store um, for this project. Like I said before, when we introduced this, it wasn't something that was just going to be a one-time thing. Um, I didn't have quite the direction that I wanted to go at the particular time, but some things have come into play, and I'm be really I'm be happy to be releasing some new content very soon. But one thing that I am very excited about right now is that due to popular request, uh, we have decided to release the interviews from the documentary in their entirety. You know, we had when we went through the editing process. The documentary itself is already about an hour and 20 to about an hour and 30 minutes. And of course, we had to do some editing to kind of get everything to fit within that time span. Well, now we're just going to go ahead and we're just going to release um, all those videos, do, do, do the interviews in their entirety. And we're going to start that with um, our special needs segment from the documentary. Now, the special needs segment was very enlightening. Uh, for me because I sat down with Greg Southern and Lorenzo Toppin and they kind of shared with me what it was like um, in their experience as a father uh, raising a child uh, with special needs. Now the, the, the interesting thing and I didn't even really realize this when um, we, they agreed to do the interview was that they both had a child that did not have special needs and they did have a child that did have special needs. So just hearing their story and how they go through their day to day uh, was very encouraging to me. I just want to encourage you guys to kind of sit back, watch, and look at the end of the video. Just leave some comments below. Leave me some feedback. Let me know what you guys think. Again, I, I really want to thank you guys for your support. I'm so looking forward to releasing uh, more great content to you guys. And again, thank you again for supporting The Missing Anchor. All right, fellas. Um, I appreciate you guys sitting down, uh, doing this, this conversation with me. I particularly wanted to speak with you both because you both have two children and you have, they're both boys, you each have a son with special needs. So I thought that would kind of be a very interesting side or topic for this particular father's project. Um, I think I would like to start off by asking you, Lorenzo, what does the word father mean to you? Oh, wow. Uh, I guess um, I, my impression or, or my thought would to be uh, my job as a dad is really to kind of figure out where my kids are going, what it is their purpose is, mm -hmm. and then tr do everything within my power to prepare them to fulfill whatever purpose that is. So as a dad, you know, my boys are now, I got twin boys, they're four, you know. Um, I'm still figuring out or still uh, learning or, or, or seeking direction about what that is for my two sons, you know. But in the, in the, in the meantime, there's things that got to be uh, or have to be, they have to be trained, they have to be learned, you know. And kids are they're not even polite anymore. <laughs> right, right, you know, right. I mean, these kids are so like, wow. But I, though that type of home training, that type of uh, presence. I mean, I'm 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 super dad. I give my kids a bath every night. You know, I That's I get them dressed to go to school in the morning. You know, I'm not. Uh, you know, I don't just push them off, or I don't not. I'm not just a spanker. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm a, I'm the I'm the real I'm a real dad. So, but I think to answer your question, my job is to prepare them and to train them. You know, and to be you know um, that presence or example to to them about what a man is and what a, a father is, what a husband is what a provider is. I think a lot of times we're always teaching our kids. It's not necessarily in our conversations, but in what we do daily. What about you, Greg? Uh, I would have to definitely agree with uh, everything that Lorenzo said. And I guess <clears throat> if I were going to be more direct, um, a dad to me means anything that I have to do to make sure that my kids succeed. So if it means being warrior, if it means being nurse, 
if it means being teacher, um, whatever it takes. Uh, so I, I can, I guess I, I want to define it, but I don't want to limit myself because right. whatever it, it, whatever I need to do to make sure that, as Lorenzo said, that my children succeed, um, that they can fulfill the purpose that they have in this life and that they can be good at whatever it is that their chosen fields are, I need to do what I have to do in order to ensure that they can be successful by giving them an example so that in turn they can do the same thing for their sons or daughters uh, as they grow and marry and have kids of their own. So tell me what was interesting because I know for me, you know, my story, um, which I'm sharing in this project as well, a lot of folks, fathers are coming from different perspectives. You know, we, we're the men we are today, we're the fathers we are today, but a lot of us have had different backgrounds. I would like to know what was the relationship like between you and your father as you were as you were growing up and, and developing transitioning from from I guess from boy to man. What, what was what was your relationship with your father like? Wow. Um I would think that my relationship uh is still strong with my father. Um, he was married to my mom, always been around. Uh, the thing with my dad, though, he worked really, really hard. Mm -hmm. And I don't think until I became grown and a man that I understood that that was his way of trying to train me for mm -hmm. what would be necessary for me to succeed. And there were times when he worked two jobs, so he would have to be at his first job at 6 a.m., wouldn't get off to the second job or get off from the second job until after 11. Mm -hmm. So there were phases of my life that I may not have even seen him during a week. Mm -hmm. You know, if I was, you know, getting up, he was already gone. And when I went to bed, he would come home after I went to bed. And, you know, we would kind of cross paths on the weekends um, for certain periods, you know, when he was holding down two jobs to do what he had to do to you know keep the lights on keep the family yeah. fed and all of that um but there are a couple things that stand out in my mind even though uh there were times that i felt like he was there but not there right. um there were times when i had situations in my own life um that i felt like he really stepped up and he made it important mm -hmm. uh to at least express it to me that hey i got your back um, I see that you're hurting or I see that there's a situation that, you know, is causing you some uh, uneasiness. And, you know, I just want to let you know that, you know, if you need me, I'm here, um, you know, dealing with girls. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember one time I was, you know, just kind of messed up at, you know, how uh, the direction of this particular relationship had gone. And it was just something simple. You know, my dad saw that I was kind of down and he mm -hmm. said, hey, come on, let's go. And didn't know what we were doing, really wasn't paying attention. Next thing I know, we wind up at a bowling alley. And he just took me out bowling just to kind of be there for me. So you would say even though he worked hard, he made the time? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. And um, I guess here now, knowing what I know, mm. uh, people generally express love the way that they want to receive it. Okay. And uh, after having read, uh, I guess, the five love languages, I guess my love language is uh, my primary is I, I'm big into acts of service. So if my wife or if people do things for me because I'm big in giving acts of service, I kind of like to receive acts of service. And uh, I think my dad was the same way. And I, I could see him, you know, the things that he would do was, I guess, how he expressed his love for my mom and for myself and my brothers and sisters. What you want to say? Um, I think my, probably my uh, experience is a little different than Greg's. Mm -hmm. I would say as a young man, uh, my relationship with my dad, I would describe, would be probably tenuous <laughs> at best. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, coming up maybe till I was... Uh, 12 or 13, he was, I mean, him and my mom had some issues, so he wasn't in my home. Um, so, I mean, things have, you know, their uh, relationship got restored. By that time, I'm, you know, 13 or 14 years old and um, not really feeling really great about my pops, you know what I mean? Right. So, but with all that said, um, 
I, I never um, now, I, mean, I always um, learned from, like I said, I think people are always teaching you. And I learned a lot from my dad early on, but he wasn't there. Uh, part of that was learning what not to do, okay. you know. You know, and part of that, and, and the part uh, after he became, uh, came in, uh, or he came, or he's, it, he was back in the home. Um, you know, my father is probably the most hardest working individual that I've ever met. I've never met anyone who uh, has worked as hard as he does or has um, to provide for his family. And early on, I mean, I think that's uh, um, that was something that I really, um, I really got a hold of that work ethic. And it's not anything. Well, it's some things that he shared with me. Um, some moments that were just uh, critical. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Just some little sayings, like you know, you have to be twice as good as people that do not look like you in order for you to get the same shot that they do. And that those little things were instilled in me for him. So even though um, earlier on, I think our relationship wasn't really all that great as an adult, mm -hmm. my father has been an immeasurable source of wisdom, um, a source of uh, 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 just an example of how <laughs> how you provide for your family and uh, I'm if I'm if I need some advice he's one of the first persons wow. who I want to go to and I, I think I kind of want to uh, talk about this for a second is just that I think a lot of people they have these experiences with their parents about what they didn't garner from them or get and they let that experience dictate their whole lives. They'll have somebody's, uh, you know, flippant action or irrational behavior, even if it's just for uh, one instance, control their life for 40 or 50 years. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, I just had to get to a point when I became an adult where I really had to just forgive my father, you know? With all that being said, I still learned so much from him. <laughs> you know what I mean? Even when he was not there, I think a lot of times you have to take the situation that you're in. I mean, with my dad, and I've, I've had kind of, you know, the best and the worst. You know, I've had, as an older, um, an adult, I've probably had the best father that anybody could have. And then as a, as a youngster, maybe maybe not so much, you know. Mm -hmm. um, that doesn't diminish our relationship, you know, and it doesn't diminish the effect that he's had upon me. It's made me very resilient, self-reliant, especially, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. Right. But I, I think um, I think that that's important um, to have. It's important to have. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know if at this stage if I would have changed it. Gotcha. Because you think it, it helped. It was just part of the development process. It kind of helped to, to mold me into uh, being comfortable with, um, you know, making it happen kind of like on your own, you know, not relying on other people to, right. to do. I think a lot of, I think... A, there's a lot of that. A lot of people are waiting around for their moms and dads to come, even as adults, to come and fix it for them. Right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think, you know, for me, you know, growing up and, you know, my mom married twice. Um, wow. And her second marriage... You know, I, I, at the time, I'm like, okay, that's great. You know, he wanted to adopt me. You know, so then we, he was in the military, so we moved. And uh, this was probably about the age of uh, six. You know, and I, I sat there and I'm like, man, this is great. And I just recall those times where um, he would do little things to 
do father son type things. Now at the time I'm six seven years old, so I'm thinking, okay, this is the way it should be. You know, I remember mm. one time he told me that, you know, he bought the pipe. He bought he bought the uh, parts for a bike, ten speed bike. So I'm putting this together for a friend, you know, help me build it and uh, painted. I mean, did everything, put the put the stickers on it, the whole nine. Had no idea I was building my own bike. <laughs> wow. That's you know? pretty cool. So I have that experience. There four years just to come home. And one day he just leaves. There was a turmoil that him and my mother were going through that I wasn't privy to. I didn't know what was going on. So I'm like, where's this guy that help me build this bike you know so I look at situations like that and all the way you know and and for me it was tough because I had a mom you know she did everything she could for me my, my her parents my grandparents were heavily involved in my life but I didn't understand what I was missing at the time you know they they, they put in as much as they could you know through school mm -hmm. private school mm -hmm. different things like that so I'm thinking hey this is what's going on I turned 24 years old only to find out that the man that I thought was my dad was my dad. Mm -hmm. So now I have a past of two fathers that I've been exposed to in my life. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm not related to any of these guys. You know, who's my dad? Wow. So I was at a point where my identity was, I was challenged. I knew who I was as a man or developing into a man. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you always want that legacy, something that you can kind of pull on and, and right. kind of draw back to. Like, OK, I know. OK, I'm acting like this because dad acted like this, you know. And so to have that conversation with my mom, you know, like OK. And, and my brother is the one who told me my brothers are older than me. You know, my oldest brother's 54. Oh, wow. So, you know, in the heat of the battle family issue we have. And yeah, man, you know, that's why such and such. And I'm like, huh? Well, you know, and I'm starting putting two together, challenge my mom. Hey, what's going on? And she's like, I can't believe he told you. I'm like, well, forget the fact that he told me. Why didn't you tell me? Right. You know, so you go through and now I'm I'm pushing what 14 years from that moment to today where I have my own kids. Now I'm like, OK, what? Let me look back and see what did I miss out on? You know, that I didn't think I was missing, but that could have been a vital building block for me as a dad. So then I go back and I make sure that I'm there for my kids. I've, I've developed and tweaked my career because I don't want to miss the games, you know, and those types of things. So I definitely understand where you guys are. I mean, it's rare that you hear like someone that had a good childhood, everyone thought it was good, but you really didn't know. Even the kid didn't know really what was going on. And so now through prayer and everything, you know, and, and having father figures that I've placed around me that I can kind of learn from, it's kind of helped me to, uh, that I don't drop the ball. You know, even talking to you guys and other, the, the fathers that were chosen for this project were chosen for a particular reason. It wasn't so much because of their story, it was what I observed. I don't have any family in this project. These are in it because I didn't want it biased as to, okay, that's family, that's his close friend. You know, I have family and friends that have kids. But I wanted men in this project who I have personally observed, who I feel represent the qualities that I think should be instituted in what we call fatherhood today. So that's a little bit why you guys, and then for you guys to know each other and then your particular stories and similarities of what's going on, I thought it would be cool. But I do want to get into, like we said, you both have children or a son with special needs. How, when you found out, I'm not sure exactly um, the moments that you all found out, where at in the pregnancies or, or post-pregnancies that you guys found out, how did it shape you or how did it affect you as a dad, not only as a dad, but having a son that you knew was going to be like, okay, this is going to be different. I didn't expect this. So how did you, y'all can feel that I don't. <laughs> uh well, I, I let Greg go first. <laughs> his, his, he, he's, he's got the easy one. Oh wow! I'm, the reason why I say that because I'm the I'm <laughs> Greg's godfather, the godfather, his first son, his uh -huh. sons. So um, what, what they, when uh, I'm not gonna tell a story. <laughs> <laughs> 
Wow. Um, well, for myself and my wife, I don't think we really had time to try and figure anything out because we found out that there were going to be challenges with him after he was born. Mm -hmm. So the nine months leading up to his birth, everything seemed, appeared to be normal. You know, all of the doctor's visits, we went, took care of those, came home, you know, had the opportunity to, you know, prepare the nest, get in his room and, you know, the cribs, all of the, the normal things that you think that you're going to go through uh, as a new father. And the day that my son was born, I recall being in the room and all of a sudden, all I remember was they pulled my son out and there was like a crowd of nurses and attendant physicians and things that kind of gathered around him. And I'm kind of with my wife. Um, she'd had a C-section, so they allowed me to be in there. And so I'm talking with her, you know, letting her know, hey, everything, you know, seems to be OK. And then when there was like a commotion on the other side of the, the OR, um, I think I remember her saying, you know, how, how was he look like? How's everything going? And at that point, I still hadn't seen him, you know, after they had cleaned him off. And then I was kind of alerted that there may be some issues um, with his breathing and, you know, some other things that were kind of going on. And so we really didn't have time to, you know, anticipate, well, we're going to do this or we're going to do this. It just kind of all seemed to happen at that one time. At that one time. And like I said, we had no idea that he was going to have any challenges. It was hey, we're having our first son and whoa, there's something going on here. And before long, next thing I knew, they had kind of carted my son up and they rushed him off to a uh, children's hospital. And it was, a, I'd say, a, a, a pretty stressful three days because my wife was still at Southern Maryland and my newborn son, firstborn, was at children's. So I spent the first three days of his life traveling back and forth between two hospitals checking on my wife and then making sure that the care that my son was receiving you know was adequate and that i could try and find out as much information because we didn't didn't have a diagnosis they couldn't tell us anything so it's one thing when you can have something that you can attack with your faith but if the doctors aren't giving you anything or they're saying we're still trying to figure it out. It kind of leaves you in a position where, okay, what are we going to do? We don't, you know, we, it was just a really, really interesting time. And as time went on, um, the doctors still never were really able to give us a quote unquote diagnosis that was specific to him. Mm -hmm. um, they said, well, it's kind of, uh, fits in this syndrome, but it wasn't really specific. So at that point, uh, kind of got with my wife and our mindset was, okay, well, if the doctors don't know what's going on, we know God knows. And at that point we can use our faith and we'll just direct what we want for our son. Mm -hmm. And since they couldn't give us anything, well, if that's the case, then this is giving us the opportunity to make the future that we want uh, right. for him and for ourselves. Right. Well, I mean, that's that's interesting. I mean, I know when um, my I have a son and a daughter, and when my son was born, we didn't even well, we didn't even know at the time my wife was pregnant early on, and she had been working out, getting in shape, and I'm looking at her, and and she's like, uh, hey, you know, um, she went in the bathroom one day and it's a lot of blood. What's going on? So she goes and gets checked out. They say, oh, you're pregnant. Man, you're having a miscarriage. At the same time. So I'm sitting here like, you know, I know exactly, because I don't know how to process that. I'm like, I don't know. What, <laughs> don't like, have time. What, emotion, <laughs> what emotion am I supposed to use right now? <laughs> like, you know, so um, they go in, do uh, DNC, do the procedure. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, man, still kind of like okay babe you know it's we didn't know we didn't have time to get really happy because we didn't know and so that happened she's resting so she you know she's working out I'm looking at her i'm like okay so one day we're in the bathroom brushing our teeth i'm looking at her you know body is just everything's getting smaller but her stomach i'm like um if the, i think we should go get checked and so she said no i'm okay 
I'm like, do a pregnancy test. And so she does a pregnancy test and she's pregnant, still pregnant. What happened was she was pregnant with twins. Wow. She miscarried one of them. Mm -hmm. They could not explain why after the proceed, how Clark wasn't, they're like, we don't know how that happened. Now, I know how it happened. Right. But I look at him like, okay, we got to figure out what your purpose is. Right. Right. Because for a reason. You went through a lot to get here. Mm -hmm. You know, um, what about you? Oh, wow. Uh, How did I find out when uh, my my son was having, uh, that I knew he was going to do special needs? Yeah. Like, Uh, like how did it, how did it affect you when you found out? Um, well, I mean, we, we went through normal pregnancy, found out we were having twins. Um, you know, um, my wife is, uh, was older, you know, those, uh, anybody over 35, they have to get checked every two weeks. Mm -hmm. So, you know, everything we're going every two weeks to get a doctor, we're getting pictures taken of the kids. Everything's great. Born, everything's great. You know, two healthy boys and not even, no need to go to NICU, both of them above five pounds. So now we're, you know, a year, you know, Mm -hmm. in, you know, 12 months and I got two twin boys and one of them is, you know, developing and, and talking and doing normal things and one is not. And, uh, that, that began to raise some flags with us. So we just began to, uh, you know, uh, like anybody would who is a believer and loves the Lord, you know, just know and believe that, you know, that God has healing. He's It's part of our package as a believer and that we know that he's going to be whole. So even though at the time um, we didn't know exactly what was going on, you know, and, you know, the, part of this is, and and I think it's important to say this, is that a lot of kids have issues and their parents just ignore them mm. and say, they're going to be all right. They're going to mm. be all right. Mm. They're going to be all right. That's a mistake. You know what I mean? And the reason why I say that is because although that right now my son's been diagnosed with autism, that's the doctor's diagnosis. That doesn't mean that I don't go get him additional services and make sure that he has everything that he needs to um, grow and develop. But... I don't ignore that those challenges are there, but I still know and believe that that is a diagnosis. Mm -hmm. The doctors that the truth of the matter, right, being because of my belief system is that he's whole and healed. So that's my perspective. You know, that's how I operate now. You know, it's you know, you think. I mean, it took us so long to have kids, me and my wife, and we went through a whole bunch of challenges with that. So here I am with two boys, one with a challenge that we waited, you know, so long to have, you know, children my wife wanted. And, um, you know, it, it, uh, it, it, it will make you think about this whole, rethink, I mean, about the whole responsibility of it all, you know. Okay, so now what is this? I mean, at the time, you know, I'm thinking, so what does this really mean? You know, am I going to have to take care of him how long? Mm -hmm. You know, till we know, you know, till till this healing is manifested. What are the what are the challenges? You know, what's the financial responsibility? How much time does it take? I mean, um, so I mean, and every kid with these challenges it's like uh you know somebody's foot it's just like a, a shoe is everything's a custom tailor-made absolutely thing right. there's no one size fits all treatment or, or things that work with kids so you have to come and kind of tailor make your approach to how your kid's going to develop so i mean my boys are four now um, so now I have one kid who is just like uh, sharp as a tack, you know. Um, not that the other one's not sharp, but um, he's just very outgoing, very talkative, huge vocabulary, engaged people, very. 
and he's four years and I have one son that, you know, uh, when he chooses to, we'll talk, mm -hmm. you know, uh, at 18 months, we're out in front of Ruby Tuesdays. He hasn't said a word now. We haven't heard any words. <laughs> so we're leaving out and, uh, a bunch of uh, people stop us like they always do with twins. And uh, he just says, bye-bye, bye-bye, <laughs> waves bye-bye. And I was just like, dude, <laughs> <laughs> are you serious? <laughs> you know, because you don't know at the time, you know, um, between 12 and 18 months, I'm thinking, okay, does he have a hearing problem? Mm-hmm. Is maybe he's deaf, mm -hmm. maybe uh, maybe it's this, maybe it's that. You know, you go get an MRI, you check to see whether there's something um, in his head that nobody. You don't know, and you don't know anything. You know, you're just kind of figuring it out. And on the initial, you know, nobody can really tell you, especially when they're very young. It's only now that he's. Um, we had some, you know, we started to go down that road that we began to find out on what's actually. Because you look at my two sons, they look like two normal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there's no, you know, there's no like uh, Down syndrome or Asperger's or any facial features that would mm -hmm. clue you mm -hmm. into that he's a special needs. He looks like any other kid. Um, but my kid, my, one of my sons, he needs um, a lot of attention, a lot of, it's difficult getting babysitter because my son is very active. He needs attention. So how did that, how did all of that make me feel? It made me feel uh, the, the, I guess initially it was man, I really got to take care of the three of these people. It's my job. And not only is it my job, my job just got a little, got a little harder. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. It got a little harder. My job just got a little harder. And I'm going to have to do some extraordinary things because I have some, an extraordinary set of circumstances. And initially, you know, you ask, man, why does this have to happen to me? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? But, you know, um, it happened because um, it, it's been placed upon me because I'm able to handle right. what what's happened. And Bryce is here for a reason. I do not know what that is. Mm -hmm. In the midst of that, uh, or in, in the meantime, while I'm figuring that out, I'm going to be the best caretaker, father, provider that I can be for him. How we looking? What's uh, our all the um, levels on uh, the battery on the audio? Two. 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 One, one's up. <clears throat> okay. 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 Um, guys, we're doing good. Um, question: Was your marriage affected when when you found oh, out? Oh, absolutely. Was, how did absolutely. it affect your marriage? Like absolutely. positive or negative? I'll let you start. On this I, I would think he's tossed. No, I would. I would really. I, I would have to say, like uh, having a special needs child presents its own set of challenges. It's it presents a new set of challenges. Uh, you know, I mean, just having Greg's here is funny. It's like I have my challenges with my child. Uh, just, just from just everyday care. Like for instance, you know how you got two kids, you may stop. And want to go to the grocery store or CVS or, you know. And I can't walk down the aisle with my son because he will get into everything right. in the whole store. <laughs> I have to be right. physically holding his hand. So now, is it now, do I want to work this hard to make a stop? <laughs> Simple little thing. Got you. Like, do do I really want that? I, it's going to take some extra things. Right. Yeah, I'll put him in the cart. Yeah, I could put him in the cart. Then the other one going to want to get in the cart. So I'm going to push two carts. <laughs> you know what I mean? I got or, you. or when they're small, I mean, even when they were small, how, how do you go into, I mean, I had a double stroller and a double, <laughs> you know, you can't even fit the double stroller through some doors. <laughs> That's just a whole twin thing, not even special needs, but... 
how did it affect my marriage? I mean, it 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 became a, it came a, a large challenge. It's still a challenge. Mm -hmm. Finding time to meet each other's needs while you are doing everything to meet the needs of your children and then your child and then the child with special needs is um it's a big it's a big challenge man and it's a challenge every day mm -hmm. it doesn't go away it's not you know um if you're if you're fortunate to get a vacation or a couple that? of days <laughs> a couple of days away cuz you have to have somebody that support system i mean thank god for family absolutely yeah Wow, I mean, thank God for my mother and my my my, uh, my mother-in-law and you know everybody that has kind of pitched in, you know. But with even with that said, um, it it is a challenge because you begin to put so much of your energy into a child that needs it. He needs attention, energy, and that can really be a really big challenge to maintaining mm -hmm. your relationship, especially with, um, I mean, I, I've read that, you know, uh, couples with um, special needs kids, they have a the highest divorce rate. Wow. Um, in the country. Um, and I can totally understand why, you know, it's tough, but the thing is you have to understand and know who you are. You got to understand and know who your spouse is. Me personally, um, you know, just not even on a biblical, I'm going to toss all that out. I mean, I like my wife enough to do that, all of that work, to stick it out. She's worth it. I can't now. Everybody might not be able to say that about their spouse. You know what I mean? My spouse is. You know what I mean? I felt that way. Greg knows. I felt that way about from before. I was like, man, this girl right here. Wow. I got a winner. This one. So she's somebody that I'm willing to put in the work to go through the the so part. So you feel she's. In this aspect, as far as parenthood, this your partner. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And has it has it helped shape the definition of partnership a little bit more? Oh, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Because with with the division of labor, I mean, you got to divide the labor up be, between for for your child, whatever their needs might be. Greg's situation is a lot more labor intensive than mine, but even so, you, we have to divide up. Okay. Who does what? Right. And let's divide up to make sure, okay, you get him ready for bed. You bathe him. You, I mean, uh, my son can't put on his own clothes. He's four years old. I got another one, his twin brother. He puts on his clothes out, lay the clothes out. He gets himself ready. I'm, you know, <laughs> it's, it's so, I, I mean, I got to get him up. I got to get him dressed. Um, my wife usually feeds him. She takes him to school. I pick him up. You know, she feeds him. I, you know, get him ready for bed. I bathe him. I put his clothes on. You know, whatever else that needs to happen in between there. Boom. And then we just have like a routine. And even, you know, on the weekends, man, uh, there was a time where I used to look forward to weekends when I worked um, nine to five, you know, because that was like the time off and the respite. But with, but with a special needs child, you work harder on the weekend than you do because you don't have, they're at daycare or they're at school right. and somebody else is doing that day-to-day -day grind feeding, changing, whatever needs to happen, you know, developmental, whatever programs you're working on, whatever, you know, uh, developmental things that they're doing, all that's being taken care of during the day. So you go, but that responsibility to get shifted to Saturday <laughs> and to Sunday. So it's a little, it's a different, and it can challenge you, especially if you're somebody who is 
more who feels like their needs are more important than their child's needs? I think you. <laughs> I know my wife's gonna see this, right? <laughs> you just messed me up. <laughs> <laughs> Like, you take it away, like, oh, but I'm going to shake your hand. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Don't shake my hand. You no, need to shake his hand. I haven't got to him yet. I haven't got to him yet because that's, I knew that doing this, it would even make me a better dad. Because I think, you know, you know, even your son, your children may be at different ages, but I don't think you ever really finish learning as a parent. Because as long as... I don't care if you're 40, 50, 60. You have your children. Each new year can present a different opportunity. So hearing this can even make me tighten up with some areas like, well, I, yeah, okay. Because I know Kelly's going to say, you heard what Lorenzo said, right? <laughs> She's going to probably use this against me. I, I, you know. But it's a, good, it's a good thing because I think fathers need that. I think fathers need to be able to focus on their families but also surround themselves by like like-minded people as it in this situation pertains to parenthood because i don't have all the answers mm-hmm. i mean my child can be older than yours that doesn't mean i'm gonna have all the answers because if you can do something that is better than i am and i it can make me a better man a better dad because eventually i'm gonna have to teach that to him Mm-hmm. So I don't necessarily want what I teach my son, what I teach my daughter to be limited to just my knowledge, mm-hmm. you know. So that's why I always try to expose myself, you know, and I've made it a point to try to keep myself accountable to certain people because, like I said, I don't have all the answers. Um, what about you? Like the effects, like with Latanya, uh, how did it? Because, see, the, the interesting thing is I can – Getting to that point of childbirth, thinking everything is one way, and then to have a monumental shift, I would assume that it would cause the, the potential for fractures in a relationship could take place because now your mindset is has, it has to change. Now you have to look at things in a whole different light. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll, how, how did things happen with you guys? Um, for us, I will say to our benefit and not that we did anything special, Mm -hmm. but I think the training, um, that we received prior to getting married, um, I think that it went a long way. We've experienced some things in our marriage and primarily around having uh, difficulties with childbirth and with children being born. Mm-hmm. Um, the foundation that we received, I think, I-, I can't even express how critical it was for us to even be where we are today. And I've even had this conversation with my wife in the past that I don't understand how people that don't have the Lord in their life that don't have the support systems that fortunately we have in our life. I don't understand how they make it. And I guess it goes right back to the point that Lorenzo said that those couples have the highest divorce rate because there are too many, too many holes in the dam as it were, and they don't have enough fingers. They don't have enough things to plug all of those holes. And that dam is just going to crack. And, but thank God that we have the same uh, spiritual foundation. Thank God that our support system being both sides of our families, um, all of that kind of kicks in. And I, I just feel really fortunate that the Lord knew that when we came together and that we were going to have um, children, that he had all of that in mind prior to um us getting to the place where we were going to have children. And so I can really, uh, even in the midst of all of the day-to-day challenges, I can first of all uh, say that I'm really grateful that God uh, had everything in place that he knew that we would need to be successful. Now, that being said, um, we do have challenges. We do experience, you know, the little things and 
uh, with our oldest son. He's 10 now. Um, and I told you that he was rushed off to the hospital from the time that he was born. And there were multiple challenges that we were faced with him. Uh, there were musculoskeletal uh, issues that he had. Mm -hmm. um, there were feeding issues he had. He had no suck, swallow, or gag reflex. So just as a normal baby, you know, you can start giving them bottles right off the, you know, the break. He didn't even have that internally. So we had to start mm -hmm. feeding him through uh, artificial means and all of those things. And uh, he had, wow, bilateral hip dislocation. So his mm -hmm. femurs uh, weren't connected to his pelvic bone, neither one of them. So he had muscular, uh, he had low muscle tone. Um, there were just so many things that we were hit with in an instant mm -hmm. and our I would say our relationship in some instances, uh, we had to work on some things to make sure that we could keep those holes in the damn plug. Right. And then there were some things that I believe because our uh, non-negotiables lined up so well, uh, the things that she had to have and the things that I had to have, they just interlocked so well that it actually made us stronger because there were some things that we were determined that nothing is going to happen outside of what we want. Mm -hmm. And it forced us in some instances to learn how to become, uh, I don't even want to say become better, to learn to become advocates for our son. Mm -hmm. um, so there were some things, like I said, that brought us together um, because you can get all types of feedback from the surroundings that you have, the environment, mm -hmm. and depending on what feedback you allow yourself to absorb and digest, that can have a great impact on what your future and what your children's future is gonna become. So I'm really grateful again that my wife is uh, strong enough and spiritually keen enough to know that when we have to go into attack mode, uh, concerning certain things around our son, that partner that you were talking about, she is that, I mean, perfectly suited for me, helped me, um, where I may be weak in some areas, she's strong, so even though I, I don't feel like I have to do it all, I don't feel like I have to know it all, um, because we can kind of work through this together and just knowing um, that I have somebody in this with me day in and day out, not, you know, the babysitter that can come by every, right. you know, once right. a month. But right. I mean, right. day in and day out, I have somebody with me physically that's going through, I don't want to call it the struggle, but just just going through the challenge the day to day and just the day to day things. And um, I, I'm really, really grateful. So we have to work on our relationship. Um, you know, we just can't get so caught up in the day-to-day -day, you know things because that can become a job right that can become a lifestyle right. where you wake up you start dealing with the kids uh breakfast ba uh, baths whatever um dressed getting them off to school on the bus then you go to work then you come home and then it's okay back right back with the kids got to deal with homework have to make oh, sure that yeah, they you true. know any after school activities that those bases have to be covered before you know it it's bedtime 8 eight thirty. now you have to get the kids in the bed to make sure that they're fresh for the following morning and after you've gone through an entire day like that you can be exhausted yourself right. and okay it can be real easy to just get into the bed and just start focusing in on what it is that i'm going to have to do the following day but you have to take time hey even if it's we're going to watch the same television program together mm -hmm. just to you know let me sit on the couch beside you you know right. you hold my hand you rub my back or you know um just just those little things that you know can be done to help to again to solidify our relationship and I, I feel as though as long as our relationship is intact doesn't even matter I mean we've seen the challenges with our son and I did not share that we had another son after our oldest Trey 
and um, his name was J. Raphael. And uh, during that situation, we knew from the very beginning, the doctors told us that we were going to have some challenges with him. And after everything that we've been through with our first son, I really didn't know how I was going to be prepared to deal with two children that had two totally different mm. uh, ranges of needs. And when our second son was born, he was born and um, with the condition that he had, he lived for eight hours. And my, my mantra now is, I saw my son take his last breath. We were holding him. I saw it. I experienced that firsthand. And in my mind now, there is nothing I can experience on this planet that can top that. Nothing. So the challenges that we deal with from day to day, whether it be our oldest son having multiple surgeries throughout the year, it's tough. It really is. But after they bring my son back from anesthesiology and I get to see him open his eyes again, for me, we won. We won. Oh, man. I did not know that. I mean, and let me say this about, I mean, just about Greg in general. He's been like a wonderful support to me because he had his son uh, first. And then secondly, when I think I'm having a challenge, you know, or I think things are rough, I think about him and his relationship with his wife and how he's handled his uh, experience with special needs. And it just make my situation seem so very small. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because he's handling it. But you I know? think even for parents, I speak for myself, that don't have a child with special needs, does the same thing. Because even with what you may think is a tough day, it's an easy day. You know, I think it's it's your perspective. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. I think if you if you tweak your perspective on the situation, and again, this is even helping me as a dad. You know, you tweak your perspective on the situation, you realize, you know, you're in a really good position. Stop complaining. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. um, what? Um, let's just wrap up, man. Um, what advice would you guys have for? a dad or soon to be dad that may be in a similar situation that may be fortunate enough to find out a little bit ahead of time, a little bit before birth that this may go on. Um, that this may be something that they have to, to deal with. What advice would you guys have? Um, I'm just going to shoot straight. I think I don't know how people who do not have a very firm and rooted belief in God and Jesus Christ, how they're able to uh, persevere day to day with a special needs child. I, I have no clue because that's like what I go to rely on. But really, I mean, straight talk is if you're in a if you're this is a challenge it's going to do one or two things it can break a relationship it can test a relationship or it can bring a relationship closer together and the choice is really like yours you know a lot of times people just throw up their hands and say it's just too hard you know it's too hard on me. It's too hard on the relationship. It just requires too much energy. Or you guys are going to be tested and you'll go on having the same relationship that you had. Or it can bring you closer. To, it is going to change your relationship. That's what I will guarantee it's going to do. Mm -hmm. It's going to change it. Now, how it changes it is really kind of how, what perspective you bring to the situation. See, I have an understanding that my son has a purpose. He's here for a reason. Right. He was given to me for a reason. 
So now, because I know that, and that's the basis a train of thought that I'm operating from, there's no outs for me with my son. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because he's in this situation with me for a reason. I have something for him that he needs that God orchestrated this particular situation. Or maybe he's teaching me mm. about what me and about how I need to go to another level. Right. So I'm really open to learning about how this situation is changing my life, my wife's life, and the people around us, and really waiting to hear from Holy Spirit to tell me, how is this whole thing going to pan out? Right. You know, in the meantime, I'm providing for my son. You know, I'm giving him everything that he needs to succeed. I'm giving him all the love and energy because kids with special needs, they need love. Right. They need attention like any other kid does. Mm -hmm. They need all of those things that children need. Not any different from that. Now, all of their normal, everyday needs, that's some extra on top. But you still got to be a dad. I still got to go in there and wake him up in the morning. I got to love him up. I got to hug him and kiss him. You know, I have to do all those dad things. So those none of those things are going to change. But for somebody who's coming into that situation, you really have to be prepared about, well, let me say this. I never knew how unselfish I could be. Mm -hmm. It's testing my limits. I'm at a limit that I never thought that I would be able to give so much to someone that that's not my spouse. He's, I mean, yes, he's my child, but I never knew that this much you could give to someone this much without any reciprocation outside of a hug or a kiss or the love that a child can show you outside of that. So you, that's that's the thing that um that has been very interesting in this for me is that you're going to get challenged with that. How much do you have in the tank? You know, as a man, as a provider, you know, how much are you willing to provide? I mean, that's mm -hmm. everything that's emotionally, good. spiritually, physically, time. You know, what are the sacrifices that you're going to have to make? You know, so it, it's no it's no small undertaking. But the thing is, because of my belief in God, I don't have to do it by myself. You know, I have other people who I can go to. Right. I have family. I have the word. I'm fully equipped. That doesn't mean it's still not challenging. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> wow. What I would tell you. I think what I would tell anybody who has the potential for their life to change in this way, you're being presented with an opportunity. And how you handle your opportunity, it's going to determine a lot of things for you. And the reason I say that is, I believe uh, it's clearly stated in the Bible that service is directly related to greatness. Mm. And there was a time in my life when I was feeling overwhelmed. Just this is a whole lot, a whole lot to deal with. The therapies back and forth, you know, D.C., Baltimore surgeries back and forth, you know, where my son may, you know, need 24 hour care for anywhere from a week to six weeks at a time. Mm -hmm. And my wife would, you know, continue to work and I, I volunteered to stay at home with my son during those times. And it was really, really challenging. And during one of those periods, I 
kind of just broke down and, you know, it's like, God, I need I need an answer. What is it that I'm supposed to be getting out of this or, you know, because we're taught every lesson unlearned is repeated. And I right. felt like I'm in this cycle. I need to learn the lesson. Let me get on so I can get to the next thing. And um, what came back to me was, Greg, I have given you an opportunity. I have the life that I have presented you, I have given you guaranteed greatness. Mm. And I didn't understand it at first, but then as the Lord began to minister me, I realized that because I have been given this opportunity to be of service to my son, the word guarantees that I am going to be great because of the level of service that I have to give. So for me, it's given me the opportunity to look at working with my son, loving my son, all of these things. It's given me the opportunity to see that God has guaranteed greatness by giving my son to me or to us. So he's guaranteed my wife and myself greatness in this life. Because we are given the opportunity, we're given the blessing to be able to serve more than most people will ever get the opportunity for or to do. And sometimes the service gets hard. It does. I, I, I will tell you now, it's not going to be easy every day to this new parent. It's not going to be easy. But if you can just kind of take a step back sometimes and just refocus and know because I am given this opportunity to serve this child, this blessing, God on the backhand has already in his word laid out that greatness is mine. Mm -hmm. Now, to what level you decide that you want to accept the challenge, that's totally up to you. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. So if you decide, as Lorenzo has already stated, I don't have an out. I'm in this until the day I die. The level of greatness for somebody with that attitude. Oh, my God. What can somebody like that expect to receive in this lifetime and in the life to come? But on the other hand, I would caution that same parent, that same father. If you walk away from this opportunity. You could be throwing away greatness in your life. Mm -hmm. Right. Because you decided to walk away from the opportunity to serve. So all I would say to that parent is just know the opportunity is being presented to you and you have to make up in your mind or decide. And that's all it is. It's just a decision. decision. Right. That's all it is. Decision. Just a decision. Am I going to do this with everything that I have and not necessarily for the payoff of greatness, but because you love your child or are you going to take the easy way out and just say, I'm done. This is too much for me and walk away from your any potential reward that could be tied into your service to that child or children. Yeah, you, you, I think Greg made a good point when and the, uh, he's speaking of a Bible verse that says the greatest among you um, is the servant. That's who Jesus said, who was the greatest, and really being a father of a special needs child or a parent of a special needs child is really about service. It's about giving and it's about service. And you have to make up in your mind and know that that's what it's about. And then you got to get to it. <laughs> if I had to wrap it up like he get Greg kind of really kind of hit that home. That's really what it is. It's about giving and it's about service. That's exactly what this whole thing is about. This has been incredible. Um, this project was created for fathers all over. I didn't want it to be focused to one particular race one particular situation, one particular economic situation, whatever. This will be something that I use as a tool. Not only the project, but this particular conversation will be something that 
I've chosen, even in the midst of creating this, something that I will use that I think not only will make me a better dad, but to make others better, that I can share with others. Because I think the bottom line is, I think fatherhood has to be defined loudly. Um, I think there's so many things going on in our society that are dictating and, and for the male figure that's growing up, you know, we've all heard the strength of every nation is determined by the male population. For the, for the, for the young man that's growing up that doesn't know how to tap back into that father that's not there, they need direction, you know, but the messages that our society is giving is it's not helping. Mm -hmm. You know, they're confused. They, you know, they, you see a lot of, you know, people say, oh, they're this, they're that. I look out on the street and I see a lot of confusion. People that just, they don't know. You know, and you can't be mad at them, but you just like, they're kind of lost. So I personally think that as men, as fathers, that even outside of our own home, people that we probably will never even know are watching us to see how we do things, to see how we support our, our wives, significant others, our kids. And I always tell people, even if you're not married you have a child but you guys aren't married that doesn't mean it's a child's fault you right. know you have to be there as a dad you know and i've heard guys say oh man she did she won't let me you know that doesn't mean anything right. you know, that 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 child doesn't care about that ex that particular excuse you know yeah. and the longer we continue to use it the worse it's going to be for the child you know so Gentlemen, I want to thank you guys, man, from the bottom of my heart for taking the time to come in to record this, um, to document this, because I definitely think, you know, especially your two stories, you've given out, you dropped so many nuggets between the both of you guys, you know, and, and if people just sit and listen to what you guys are saying, man, I think it'll just carry people to that next level, especially as dads, man, so... I want to thank you guys again for doing this and, and taking the time, man. I, I appreciate you guys, man. And um, that's it. I think we're going to wrap it. Well, Troy, I'd like to take the opportunity to thank you. It's definitely been an honor to have you ask me to be a part of this project. Thank you again, sir. Yeah, you're welcome. Man. Thanks. Thank you. Definitely. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching the video. If you're interested in uh, viewing more content as we release it and want to be notified, just click the subscribe button and we'll be sure to let you know when our next video airs. Thanks for watching.